What is going on traders? Welcome back to the Traveling Trader. Today I'm going to go over the S&P 500 technical analysis and go over some of the best stocks you can buy now and why. And by the way, if you get anything out of this video, go ahead and leave it a thumbs up. And I want you to leave in the comment section a random stock play or random options play that you think I should get into. And I have a Webull account set up with about $1,000 in it just for the sweepstakes here. We're gonna be doing something fun. So leave it in the comment section below and let me know what stock or what options play you want me to get into. And by the end of this week on Friday, on Friday's video, I will be picking a, a comment at random and entering that play with the money that I have in that Webull account. And the profits that I get, if if there's any profits that I get from that, I don't care if it's 10% or 1000%, whatever it is, I'm going to be giving it to you, the comment that I picked. So make sure that you're not trolling and you actually make a stock pick that you think will be viable because if I pick you, you're going to want that position to be profitable. So, but I will literally the, the first comment that I pick at random and by the end of the month will give you the profit. So put that in the comment section below. A lot of you feel like you missed the bottom and let's be honest on some of these stocks, you probably did miss the bottom if you didn't buy at the at the low here during to, towards the end of March. However, the market is always open and there are always opportunities to be had. It doesn't mean that just because you missed, you know, Lululemon, which is now at all time highs, crazy. We got in that at around $200. It's now at 323 up 61% on that or Microsoft, which was actually trading at around 130 and is now at 185. I mean, just because you missed these stocks doesn't mean that you missed every single opportunity. Yes, I know it sucks to look at the spy and see that, hey, there was this low here, this clear low, at least just taking to account where we are today, you know, doesn't mean that that's, that that's going to be the all time low or that we won't see another low potentially if we hit a recession. Who knows? But so far, this does seem like the low and we have pumped so much that it can be discouraging. I don't want you to be discouraged because there are always opportunities to be had, especially if you trade options. Yeah, you see that the S&P actually, get, well, this is the SPY, but you know, very similar to the S&P, actually gained 40% since the, the lows at the end of March. And like I said, especially if you know how to trade options, you can play the market regardless of direction, even if it's a neutral the direction. We have a iron condor on Zoom right now. And if you take a look at our iron condor on Zoom, it basically, it, what we're playing right now is for Zoom to stay in between these levels. And and these levels being between 180 and 235. So Zoom doesn't really have to skyrocket to make money. We're already up 30% on this iron condor. We're up 71% on the on the Tesla put option. And this is aside from the Tesla that I'm holding. This Tesla put option was just you know, selling the, the put spread, the 755, 760 put spread, which bets that Tesla is going to remain above 760 by expiration, which is June 19th. And we're currently up 71% on that. So if you know how to play options, you are at a great advantage. As a matter of fact, looking at this, all of our options are up right now. Tesla's up 71%, Zoom's up 30%. Moderna, this one expires july 2nd so it still has quite a bit of time but it is currently just a little bit up 1.6 percent amt this is the 5g tower corporation and this one also expires june 19th so we have a bit of time for this but this is also an iron condor so you know amt has to stay between 204 242 and a half and 280 this spy iron condor right here has to stay you know I've, i got this when the spy was still at around 300 dollars, but the spy has to remain between 250 and 320 dollars by june 26 for me to collect the entire premium which at this point i got a dollar and four cents per share so if i did close it out today i'm down but you know i'm betting that the spy will remain below 320 by june 26 and i might have to close it out before if we if we actually push past $313. So that takes me to the SPY analysis and then I'll get back into the stocks. But let us take a look at the S&P 500 here. So this is, you know, probably the, the index that tracks the stock market the best. And if you take a look at the S&P 500, this is the moment of truth. And if, if you've watched the last few videos, I said that the $300 level and the 200 moving average, this was the psychological level here where 
you're going to get a whole bunch of FOMO traders coming in. Now, I also said that if we comfortably closed above $300 for a few candles, then it is more likely that we will see 313. Why 313? Well, because it's the area of this previous resistance that we see here. And that is also the 0.786 Fib level. So there's a level of confluence here. And we are at that level now. And I actually did a poll on YouTube uh, yesterday saying, do you th or a couple days ago, saying, do you think that the SPY will get to 313 first or fall below 300? Most of you got it right. 147 people voted so far, but most of you got it right and said that, you know, 62% of you at least said that we'll hit 313 first. And if you look at the high today on the SPY, it was $313.22. So we did hit that 313 mark. Now is the moment of truth. We will see what happens to the SPY. But if we break above 313 and close above, then I'm on record saying that we will revisit all-time highs. It's just inevitable. And somebody had left a comment on, on my last YouTube video saying, you know, that it was stupid for me to talk about all-time highs. But look now, I mean, if you measure where we are now to the all-time high in the SPY, it's less than 10%, dude. It's 8.5% to all time highs. We're talking about all time. So no, I mean, looking at it now, it wasn't stupid to make that comment. So I'll be watching this closely tomorrow and Friday to see what happens. I mean, if you take a look at, at the news, you just wouldn't believe that the stock market is doing this, right? Between the social unrest, the pandemic, the high unemployment numbers, the fact that retail is still largely closed. So you would think that coming up on a chart resistance level, including all of those fundamental factors that we would see some resistance here, but I'm not one to argue with the markets. I just trade what I see. Now, if you do find resistance and fall, I do think this is the plausible trading range here, just because we spent the most time after the crash. This is the, the, the level at which we spent the most time between 270 and 295 on the SPY. All right, so you missed the bottom on a lot of stocks. What stocks can you buy now and why? Well, I went over this on Monday's video, go back and take a look, but I mentioned EWZ. And currently EWZ is up for us. Since I bought it on Monday, EWZ is currently up about 12 or 13%. And EWZ is an ETF that tracks Brazil's markets. It's, it's an index made up of large and mid-sized companies in Brazil. And the reason that, I, what, that I'm bullish on it is because Brazil is the latest victim of the pandemic. They started later than the rest of the world and, and, and specifically the countries that were hit badly, including Italy, the US, etc. Brazil just started ramping up and, and they haven't even hit their peak yet. So their economy is now being crippled by this. And EWZ is an otherwise very stable ETF. So now that it has tanked, it, it's almost like you know, being able to uh, invest going back in time and invest in the US economy. This seems to be the low for Brazil's economy currently. That's why I bought into UWZ, EWZ, sorry. And Brazil has one of the world's largest economies and world's, world's largest population. So I'm buying this. I'm going to keep it long term, although some people have bought in to swing it. SPG, uh, just to check up on that, this is another one that I bought on Monday. We're currently up 27% on SPG since Monday. This is a real estate investment trust that specifically has to do with malls. And because retail is eyeing a full reopening soon, we're expecting the stock to do well long term. Now on this stock, I wouldn't buy it. I would wait for a retrace because we are currently at resistance. And this is something that, that I'll, I'll talk about now. But basically, a lot of, of these battered stocks are at resistance. So if you take a look at, at Royal Caribbean Cruises, we're at resistance today. If you take a look at Norwegian Cruise Lines, we're at resistance today. And this coincides with the resistance that I just showed you on the S&P. If you take a look at a lot of airlines here, Spirit Airlines, we're at resistance today. So this, all the resistance levels that are coinciding with the stock market resistance, this is a, when I say it's a moment of truth, I really mean it. It's not like we haven't been at these levels levels before since after the crash. I mean, even right after the crash, we bounced to these levels and bounced there a couple of times. We really need bullish momentum to pierce through and close above these resistance levels. So same thing on, on SPG. I wouldn't, if you are not in SPG currently, I would wait to see what happens. If we break out, fine. But if we get rejected, then I would wait. Uh, I would wait for that rejection before jumping back in. Disney is one that we're up 20% on. I actually sold Disney for profits a few days ago, 
and I'm looking to get back in. But, you know, with the NBA opening up and with uh, Disney World opening up, with potentially movie theaters coming down the line opening up, Disney is still cheap relative to what it was trading at before the pandemic. So Disney is one that I would actually dollar cost average in, meaning buying a certain amount on a scheduled basis, because we can easily see Disney keep climbing and we could see it retracing. So if it does retrace, you can get, uh, you know, you can average out your price, your entry price by buying lower. And I sent all these out, including the options alerts and the trades that I talked about in the beginning of the video. I sent all these out on our Discord. Uh, you could see here, this is uh, where the options alert section is. There's a stock section as well. So go ahead and sign up if you want access to that. You also get full access to my portfolio. It costs you less than a cup of coffee a week. And I think it's a fair deal, especially compared to some of these other jokers out there. All right, let's get back to the chart. So like I said, I would dollar cost average on Disney. Beyond Meat is another one that has a potential to trade above $200 consistently in the long term. It actually did hit $200 before after that the IPO. And we see this Adam and Eve pattern forming here. But this is one that, that I would add to the long term portfolio as well. AMT, there was a good entry here. We did do uh, an option on it. But you know, it's now at all time highs. This is a 5G stock. However, if you look at AMT's long term, you can still buy this for the long term. Just don't expect to make any money on it in the short term, like as in for a swing. But if you look long term, I mean, this is a really healthy stock that just continues to gradually go up. You can you can consider it a growth stock. And one that I kept on warning was still discounted. I'd said it time and time and time again on this channel and on the Discord. Google, this one was, you know, one of the tech stocks that that wasn't following the Amazons and the Microsofts, etc. on its bounce up, it, it was bouncing up very gradually. And you could see here, it, it stuck around in, in this period for quite a while, maybe two weeks. And it was it was still very undervalued. Now currently, you know, Google's back up to almost $1,500. We're up 16% on Google. But this is one that, that I would dollar cost average into as well. Still, you know, a few percentage points shy of all time highs, but was trading at a discount for a very long time. One that is still viable is CRM, which is Salesforce. This one is seeing some support at the 21 EMA. And anytime I can get a discount on Salesforce, especially at the 21 EMA, I will add this to the long term portfolio. So you get the gist in terms of if you're not invested, what you can do now, I would dollar cost average into a few of these you know, blue chip companies. And then the, the rest, especially the battered stocks, like I said, Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, these stocks I would wait on because we are at resistance. It doesn't make sense to buy here. There's no upside in buying here if you are not already in these. I would wait for a retracement, but the next time that it retraces, I would not miss the opportunity to pick it up. And something like Lululemon, which is just blasting. I mean, when you see stocks like this retest the 21 EMA, which is kind of a equalizer, then that is when I start scaling into them long term. Even if you look at you know, look at look at any of these uh, stocks that are just going absolutely nuts like Zoom. You know, this one, every time it retraces to the 21 EMA and sometimes the 50 EMA, this is when we tend to see the bounces. And when I got in Zoom the last time, it was after it hit the 50 EMA. Same thing with Microsoft. Every time it hits the 21 EMA, that's when it tends to see a bounce. So anyway, that is it for this video. I know it sucks to be in a holding pattern on, on a lot of these stocks. But if you're not already in, and I don't blame you, I mean, you know, everyone thought that that the market would drop further. However, you can't FOMO into everything just because you missed the, the rally. It's not like the market is going to keep rallying at the same rate just because, you know, it did it since the, the pandemic low. As a matter of fact, we could end up seeing a correction again in the market based on where, you know, where the spy is at, based on where some of these these battered stocks are at. So if you waited this long, then I would suggest waiting on a lot of these stocks at these resistance levels and just dollar cost averaging into the blue chips. And then obviously, if you know how to trade options, that gives you a whole that just opens up a whole, you know, whole nother door of opportunity to swing trades where, like I said, I mean, the stock doesn't even have to move for you to make money that that Tesla option that, that we're in. I mean, we're up. If I go back to it, you'll see we're up 71 percent on that Tesla option. And that the stock basically didn't move since we entered that that option. And if you're having trouble with options, or maybe you're not having trouble, but you would like to accelerate your learning and would like one on one training with me, sign up that link is in the description. I only have one left for June. Those like I said, go really quick. And they have since June first hit 
All the spots have gone. There's one more spot left. Sign up if you want. If you just want access to the trade alerts and our VIP trading group, that same link is also in the description. Hit that thumbs up if you get anything out of this video. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what trade you want me to enter for you. I will pick a comment at random and will enter that trade. And by the end of the month, if it has any profits, I will give you those profits. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.